It's Dan here, and today I've got a really nice tutorial for you on how to create this simple collage effect inside of Photoshop. Um, this can be used in backgrounds, banners for your website, you know, kind of a gallery preview type thing, or whatever you want to do. Um, obviously, what I've created here can be improved in a thousand ways. Um, you can have different shapes, different images, uh, the strokes, different colors. I go on for days, but we're just going to kind of recreate this. I'll show you the steps of how I did this, then I'll kind of throw a few more ideas at you, show you how you could um, incorporate them, kind of different shapes and maybe different strokes. Maybe you want like a dashed dashed line instead of a solid line, whatever. But we'll get into that. Uh, but first, we're just going to pretty much recreate this really quickly. And so I'm just going to go File, New. And then we're going to make the document 2000 by 750. This was simply just so I could easily figure out how big I wanted the boxes and make them all equal. Um, if you're doing this for like a website, you may need to adjust these. Uh, these won't fit a website very well, um, unless obviously you've got some code that scales it down to just you know fit whatever the size of the screen is that is looking at it. Um, <clears throat> but whatever, this was just just for making it really easily. Um, you can do any size you want, it's entirely up to you. Um, but obviously we want to be 72 pixels, um, unless you want to print this, because um, this is kind of a thing you maybe you know could print out and frame it or something. Um, so if you're going to do that, <laughs> make this 300, um, but if you're not, make this 72, and then color RGB color. Blah. Right, we're going to unlock the layer straight up, we don't need that. Um, we could delete that, but we're going to keep it anyways, because um, you won't be able to see the background because these are all full blocks that fit the whole image. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our rectangle tool, and if you're on a newer version of Photoshop, it's really easy to get the exact size you want. You simply just click, and it'll let you type it in, or you can drag out, and you'll get a properties window, kind of like in Illustrator, where you can add a stroke and a fill color. You can change this where it's on about where you can change the stroke, um, but for us we're going to make the width 500 obviously this will change depending on how big your document is and how where you want the boxes and how you want your collage set up but like I said I'm going to recreate the one I showed you at the start so and we're going to make this black simply by clicking on the little layer thumbnail which lets us change the color while it's a vector and obviously because this is a vector layer we can change the size of it and scale it up and down without losing the uh, quality without like blurring or anything so what we're going to do actually is we're going to click on the layer at the bottom, the what was the background layer, and we're going to drag out some ruler lines. If you don't have oh crap, if you don't have the uh, ruler lines, you just hit Control R. You can see it shows and hides them. Then you just simply drag from, click and drag from the uh, ruler line or the ruler marks at the top, and it should snap. If it doesn't snap to uh, anything go to view and then the snap to and you can check which ones you want on if you ever want to hide these by the way hit control and colon semicolon key that will just hide the ruler lines um, and another thing if you're using Photoshop CC um, if you hold control and hover over things once we get a few more shapes here anyway you'll notice you get these kind of pink ruler lines and they'll show you the the dimensions of things in centimeters anyway you probably change that but once we get a few more shapes, I'll show you how better that works. Um, it really helps for things like this, where you just kind of trying to just match everything up to kind of look uh, even. That so we're going to duplicate this layer by hitting Control J, and then we're simply just going to, as you can see, look these these pink ruler lines. You'll notice we get that one in the middle. That means it snapped perfectly to the side of this one, and then we're just going to drag this till it snaps to the ruler line. And we're going to hit Enter, and we're going to change the color of this ever so slightly, so we can actually see where all these different shapes are. Then we're going to duplicate this, holding shift and then clicking until it snaps, or dragging anyway. And then we're going to drag this all the way up to the end until it snaps. Hit enter to apply the transformation. And then we're going to duplicate this one, drag it down the bottom. Uh, the reason I'm kind of rushing is because I don't want this video to be super long uh, because I don't have the greatest upload in the world and um, anything over 15 minutes takes like two hours to upload, so it kind of cripples my internet when I'm uploading, so it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so, yeah, once we've got this, we're just going to take this, duplicate it again, I'm going to change the color once again, a little bit lighter, holding shift, keeping it, and then we're just going to make it the same size as this one. As you can see, we just did that simply by 
shaping it here with our eyes and then we're just going to fill it in this gap and then what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate again and then we're going to hold shift and drag to the left until it snaps as you can see with the lines obviously if you're not on Photoshop CC you might have to type these in manually or you know just kind of eyeball it and then we're just going to make these so they are half of each other just like that see simple so now we've got our basic setup come out even lighter so now you can see this is pretty much what we had here but without obviously the images and the stroke uh, the images we took are from uh, unsplash.com it's a uh, free stock photography website um, it gets updated like every 10 days with 10 new photos uh, which is nice uh, they're really nice quality they're good for you know messing around with photo filters on and stuff so and obviously they're free stock photography so you can use them in all your work uh, without having to worry about copyright so uh, but basically just took these images I'm just going to take them out of this this one so I don't have to copy and paste them all from the website again just going to quick select all of them hold a control click in all of them and then drag them in here and obviously it's kind of uh, kind of what it looks like when you just drag in a load of images from your computer anyway so what you want to do is you kind of just want to hide everything apart from one image and then you kind of want to decide which one you want it to go in and then once you've decided obviously this one was in the far left one we're going to drag this layer above that box and then when it's above that box we are going to hold alt in between to create a clipping mask if you don't know what clipping masks are I've made a tutorial specifically on it and we're just going to click and this is just going to create a clipping mask for us in short it basically just uh, the top this top layer that's being clipping mask into the bottom layer uh, this top layer will only show in parts where this bottom layer has filled and it takes opacity into consideration so if you have a gradient that goes from 100% transparency to zero it will do the exact same effect to the thing that's clipping mass so you'll get this kind of fade out effect um, pretty simple really um, they're really easy to use and they're so helpful especially for things like this so we're just going to leave that there I'm not going to be too picky like I said I don't want this video to be too long and we're literally going to rinse, rinse and repeat rinse and repeat boys um, obviously you probably need to size your images up a bit better because mine were already sized for what they were I think this one went in this one yep and this one was in this one and that one and that one so obviously I've kind of rushed out a little bit you would take a lot more time trying to get the images in the right place um, but once we've done this we want to add a stroke so we want to go to one of the actual rectangle vector layers and go to blending options now we want to go to stroke and then we want to set it to inside and set the pixels to 5 obviously this depends on what look you're going for but to create the exact look that I did before I did 5 pixel stroke that was white and then you get this as you can see on this one here so what we're going to do then is we're going to right click on that layer and we're going to go copy layer style then I'm going to hold control and click the rest of the layers and then I'm going to right click and go paste layer style just so we get that stroke and everything and then I'm just going to hit all the buttons uh, so we get a bit more space in the layer tab and then you'll notice the outside stroke is actually thinner than the inside one why is this? well basically because we've set the stroke of every single box to 5 um, obviously you have, if I zoom in really close here, you've obviously got and it's on the inside of the image so here we have if you cut this down the middle with a ruler line um, this here is five pixels on this image on the inside and then five pixels on this image on the inside so when they're side to side which all of these are um, it equals to ten simple math but that's what I mean it's it's basically a ten pixel stroke now around the whole image but obviously this outside one is not connected to anything else so you only get a five pixel stroke um, so we're going to have to create a create our own stroke really by creating a new layer hide the ruler lines and then we're going to fill this with any color and make the fill opacity zero uh, we have to fill it with a color or something otherwise the blending options will not show and obviously that's why we're changing the fill not the opacity because we want the uh, the layer styles to show um, if we change the opacity it also affects the layer styles uh, so now when we're in here we're going to go to stroke exactly the same uh, but we're going to set this to 10 instead of 5 we we'll obviously want this white and there you go you have that effect and the only thing I added was 
some effects which I'll just quickly drag into this image and I'll show you exactly what they were because um, I don't really want to go over these because this is not really the main focus of the image uh, the tutorial. Uh, basically I have two curves, one set blending mode to lumin luminosity and one set to color. Basically all this does is when curves is set to normal um, it affects both the lightness and darkness and the color uh, lightness and darkness of the colors as well. If you set it to luminosity it only affects the uh, the brightness and darkness of the image um, and then obviously I've got one that's set to color which only affects the color then not the lightness and darkness. Uh, this color one has a slight shift in the blue to give this kind of this blue tint and then I've added a vibrance um, which kind of washes out the image a little bit uh, it takes some saturation and adds some vibrance and then this exposure layer basically just adds kind of this like white really washed out effect um, which is what I was trying to go for because this image on the right, uh, left was really like saturated and uh, warm compared to the other images that look kind of cool and I don't mean that as in they look cool I mean as they kind of have like a blue bluish tint you know that side of the color spectrum spectrum um, but yeah it kind of worked a little bit uh, if you take that off put it on personally I think it looks a lot better with it on but that's obviously down to you so you can obviously add your own effects there um, things you can change about this you can obviously use different shapes um, if we wanted to we could add like a circular one here like in the middle of this one and I think I have no I don't I'll just open a random image copy this bird one um, so we've got the circular one I'm just gonna paste create a clipping mask this could be kind of like a <laughs> profile picture type thing. Put that there. I'm going to select both of these. You could put this wherever you want. Actually, it looks best there. Don't it? And obviously, you probably want to add the stroke to this. The same stroke. You kind of want it to look the same. And obviously, like that one, because it's not connected to anything, you probably want to go in there and make that 10. Um, if you want a different kind of stroke, you can. If you have the properties tab open, which is, up, I think it's only Photoshop CS6 and above that has this, but um, you can go in and you could make this kind of a a dotted line. What you could, if you didn't have, there you go. You don't want to be using the blending options. Um, this is kind of its own stroke type thing. So we've made that white. You know, so we get that. Um, we can set this to outside. I believe that's outside that's kind of half and half and then that's inside so that's the outside we have like a really dotted one on the outside actually halfway that looks pretty cool <laughs> yeah you can go cook you can go do what you want yeah the world is your oyster I don't know what these do these are more for sharper edges not circles but this obviously make like strokes curved and stuff um, or like you know like a sharp edge like a 90 degree angle and things there so yeah you can do loads of things if you mess around with the stroke um, the setup, the main setup of the image really how well these squares go the shapes you use um, you could have you know some diagonal shapes you, you literally do any shape you want <laughs> as long as it shows enough of the image you could literally run this um, which I've held shift so I've actually added it. So instead of having this one, we can have like a bird. Uh, a bird, a cloud. <laughs> so you can do loads of things. It's, um, it's entirely up to you. Um, I hoped you enjoyed. Um, nothing too crazy. Um, but uh, it's a really nice effect. And if you take your time on it, which I didn't with this one, this was kind of rushed. Um, you can come up with something that looks really really good especially if you go for like a background or some sort of really large collage that would go on say like a, a wall um, you could make some really nice stuff with this um, and like I said it's not really that hard to do it did this quite quickly so um, yeah if you liked the video liked it if you disliked it disliked it um, if you disliked it disliked it if you disliked it dislike it um, hopefully you didn't but uh, <laughs> um, if you've got any other tutorial requests or tutorial requests or uh, any general comments about the video leave them in the uh, comment section below I'll be sure to reply and answer any you know tutorial questions or anything like that 
And other than that, I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Peace.